And that's the thing. You always start on Instagram for just a few minutes and you end up going down a rabbit hole looking at somebody's boyfriend's mother and you don't even know how you got there and next thing you know, two hours are gone. What's up guys? Welcome back to The Nurse Nook. My name is Alexis Nicole and I am a neonatal ICU registered nurse and I make content all about lifestyle, wellness, and my life as a nurse. I am so excited about today's video, y'all. I have really, really been loving being in the wellness space of social media. I think this might be my absolute favorite space. I have been really deep in the nursing world for quite some time, really since I started my channel and social pages. And I'm slowly like making the transition to doing a lot more wellness content. And I love it because it feels very true to who I am. It feels natural and I'm really just sharing the journey that I have been on and I feel that it's resonating with a lot of people and it just feels a lot more authentic and valuable to my audience. The irony of me plugging in my Instagram as I'm making a video about social media breaks. But if you want more content on the wellness space, nursing, lifestyle, definitely check out my Instagram page. I post there almost daily. So if you want more inspirational content, give me a follow. Now this video is something that has been in the works for quite some time. I did my 30 days no social media back in January. So while everyone was doing dry January, which is no alcohol, I was partaking in no social media January. But life happens. I recently just finished my second semester of grad school. So I feel like I have time to think and be more creative and be myself again. So I wanna get into why I decided to take the social media break. This is actually not the first time I have done this. I did this about, I wanna say like, five or six years ago now, I did 30 days or one full month off of social media, but I went kind of hardcore with it. Not only did I not do any social media, but I also didn't listen to any music with words and didn't watch any like TV or anything like that. The reason I did that was just to give myself a very clear, content-free mind and just to see what it's like just being with my own thoughts and just being able to feel clear and be creative and really get deep into myself. Initially, when I did that, it was a little hard to kind of figure out what to do with all my time, but by the end of the month, I was so obsessed with how I felt. I actually made a video about it. I will plug that in the description down below. It was such an eye-opening experience and it's something that I definitely wanted to do again. Fast forward like five years later and I'm finally getting the chance to do it again. I don't know why it took me so long because I experienced so many benefits, but that's neither here nor there. So the reason this time why I wanted to do the social media break was because I was getting into a space where I just felt very mentally foggy. I felt like I could not concentrate on anything. I felt like there were 5 million tabs open in my brain. It literally felt like that SpongeBob meme where he's running around, there's like little sponge drops running around his brain and they're like throwing all the files everywhere, everything's on fire. That's what it felt like to be in my brain. Just five million things going on at once. I could give nothing my concentration and it was just becoming a little bit overwhelming. And so I knew that being addicted to my phone, being addicted to scrolling on social media was something that was a huge, huge contributing factor to feeling so foggy just yucky for lack of a better word. So I just wanted to start my new year off in a very clear, mentally sound space. I was also heading into what I knew what was gonna be a difficult time. I was starting my second semester of grad school. I was gonna be taking pretty tough exams this semester. I was in pathophysiology, which is a pretty tough class at the grad level. And I also had just purchased a new home. So I was gonna be not only in grad school, but also trying to figure out how to be a homeowner and decorate a whole new home. And that is in and of itself a huge hurdle. So I really just wanted to take this time to really just center myself and just to think clearly. So some of the negative things I noticed using social media, and this isn't just for myself, this is stuff that people have talked about. I've watched so many videos on this podcast, read articles, read blog posts. So this is a lot of stuff that is commonly seen in people that use social media frequently. For me, the biggest thing was the attention deficit. 
I was so used to that dopamine release every time I refresh the page and there's an exciting new image, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, there's always something new. So that really contributed to my lack of ability to focus on anything. Focusing on things became extremely difficult because I was so used to closing one app when something got boring, immediately opening something else. I never gave myself time to be bored or really just to sit in my thoughts. It's almost like a mindless scroll takes over and you don't even know what you're looking for. You don't even know what you're doing. You're just constantly scrolling and next thing you know, you just wasted two hours and you have no value that came out of that. It's just time literally wasted down the drain. So I was really just tired of wasting my time. So one of the biggest things that came out of taking the social media break for me was I felt like there were so many more hours in my day. I literally, y'all, I felt like I created time. Like time was just like, oh, here's some more time. Here's some more time. I'm like, where did this time exists before was i just deleting hours from my life and essentially that's exactly what i was doing because like i said earlier you get into this like mindless scroll and you're just you can't even help yourself it's just like an addiction you're like i need more and next thing you know your whole day is gone so that was the biggest biggest benefit that i received from quitting social media was the time in addition to the time, I felt like I became so creative during this month. When you're on social media, you're constantly being fed new content. It's like content is just being thrown in your face over and over again to the point where your brain doesn't get a second to kind of formulate its own thoughts and creations because you're just being overwhelmed with other people's thoughts. So the creativity is something that I noticed because I was allowing myself time to actually get bored and time to just be with myself and to think, I started coming out with or coming up with really cool ideas, just random things that I had never thought about. I mean, I was thinking about like creating together like outfits and really cool video ideas and things that I just have never thought about before and things that I have not done before. Everything was kind of just coming to a head and it was almost like a, uh, like when weeds grow so quickly and just sprout up everywhere, that's kind of what it felt like. Just random bouts of like creative thoughts, which was a beautiful experience. I wanna to touch back on the time aspect. I don't think you realize how much time you spend on social media until you actually go into your phone settings and click on that little screen time button and see how much time you spend on your phone a day. For me, my screen time was sometimes like six hours a day, which is craziness. I'm like six hours, that's like almost like a full work day damn near. So by quitting social media, I use those hours to do things that were productive. And so that's another huge thing that came out of this for me was my productivity increased dramatically. Not only was I getting stuff done that I had been procrastinating for months, but I was also like taking up new hobbies. I really, really put a lot of focus in my reading. I am a reader, I love to read books, but sometimes I get distracted and I'll read a few pages and then I'll forget about it and go on social media and then read another few pages. But without social media, I had the time and attention to sit there and actually like read through books. So I read four books in January, which is unheard of for me. I know some people are like, okay, that's nothing. But for me to read four books in one month, that is huge for me. And so that was something that I really, really love that I was able to take this time and do something productive with it instead of just coming to the end of my day and realizing that I really haven't done much today, but I know what Susie in Minnesota is doing with her day, but I still feel kind of unfulfilled and feel like I didn't do much. And I just was tired of that feeling of, getting to the end of my day and feeling unproductive, feeling like I didn't do much with my day and just wasted my time. Another positive that came out of it for me was I didn't have any FOMO. If you're not familiar with FOMO, it's short for fear of missing out. So FOMO used to be something that was really big in my life. I used to feel like really left out if I would see friends hanging out and I wasn't invited. But with growth and therapy and maturing, I kind of realized that 
I really don't care if I'm not invited. There's probably a good reason and I am much happier doing whatever I was doing in the first place. But I will say every now and then, um, it does kind of like come up a little bit and it's like, oh, I wish I could have gone to that. But not having social media, you literally never see that. And it's just one other thing that you don't have to think about. I never saw people out eating, drinking, going out, bars, whatever. So I never felt left out of it because I didn't know it was happening. So that was a great benefit. Also for me being a social media influencer and having social media kind of like a second career, by taking a break on social media, I felt an extreme sense of privacy, which was really nice. Being on social media, I share a lot of my life. I share my daily routine. I share a lot about my experiences, which I absolutely love, but sometimes your privacy can feel a little bit violated. And it was just so nice to just go about my day and knowing that nobody knows what I did today or or knowing I don't have to share what I did today. So the sense of privacy was great. It was also really nice to be able to go out to dinner with friends, catch up, and not having to feel like I had to capture the moment to prove it to social media. I felt like I was able to be so much more present in the moment because I wasn't concerned about capturing the perfect memory the perfect picture the perfect angle i literally was just able to be in the moment and not worry about who saw what piggybacking on the social media influencing a big reason why i also wanted to take a break was i felt myself comparing myself to other people on instagram now i wasn't comparing myself in the aspect of like oh my gosh she's so pretty her butt is so big, she's so skinny, her makeup looks so good. I wasn't comparing myself physically, I was comparing myself more so subconsciously, and it's something that I didn't even realize at first, but I was comparing myself content-wise to other content creators. I would do things like, oh my gosh, like I wish my content looked like that, or oh my gosh, they're posting all the time, I need to work on my posting, like why am I not posting that much? And so things like that, after a while, take a toll on you. And like I said, it's not something that was immediate, it's something that I kind of like stepped back and looked at and like, girl, are you comparing yourself to other people? So it's one of those things that are not obvious, but when you really sit back to reflect, it's like, okay, maybe this is a little unhealthy, maybe I need to take a step back. And this is true for a lot of social media users. If you're not immediately realizing this, something that could even be happening like behind the curtain that you don't even realize subconsciously, you're comparing yourself to how this person looked or, or why you don't have this or why you don't look like that. So I think it's really healthy just to take a step back and really analyze like where you are in your headspace and just making sure that you're not comparing yourself to anybody but yourself. And the last point I'm gonna make, which is one of my favorite things that came out of this is because I stopped using social media as a form of escapism, I really, really cut back on my procrastination. Because I didn't have anything to distract me, from what I needed to do, it was a lot easier to work on tasks, especially because I am in grad school. Studying was something that is huge for me and something that I need to be doing, but it's so easy to just hop on social media and just look on Instagram for a few minutes and totally forget about your problems. And that's the thing, you always start on Instagram for just a few minutes and you end up going down a rabbit hole looking at somebody's boyfriend's mother and you don't even know how you got there and next thing you know two hours are gone it's never just the five minutes that's how you get yourself you talk yourself into taking just a little break and the next thing you know your whole day is derailed <laughs> but for me procrastination was something that is very huge and something that i struggled with for a very long time after doing a lot of research on procrastination i know now that procrastinating is just my body's way of avoiding stress and we're working on it every day but by not having social media it took just one less distraction away from me to escape and jump to whenever i started feeling the stress of a task coming up if you guys like this video and this topic let me know down below i would love to give you some more of this wellness mindful content thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video